Hi, my name is Egon Trujillo, and this is my final project for my presentation of learning PLCs. So I wanted to start off first with giving just a general overview of why PLC is such a necessity. Then I wanted to explain how PLC practices could impact student learning and success at my high school. Then I wanted to just go ahead and elaborate on who actually is on the PLC team that I created. Then I wanted to go ahead and explore with you some of the meeting times that we had and some of the collaboration that took place. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and show some actual results from our PLC SMART goals. So first of all, what is a PLC? Well, according to Deal and Peterson, PLCs are essentially so that um, schools can ensure that there's a shared purpose for all stakeholders, um, so that there's collaborative work around instruction, and to really ensure that there's a shared responsibility for all student learning and success. Now, Dufour also tells us that PLCs are so that students are learning and not simply being taught, and that there's always a focus on results. A little bit about my high school. So I work at Franklin High School in Highland Park, which has roughly 1,400 students. Of those, 95.3% of them are socially, economically disadvantaged and 90% uh, percent of them are Hispanic, and of those, about almost 11% of them are English learners, which is one of the groups that I wanted to focus on for this PLC, according to the California Department of Education. And what I predicted that PLCs could actually do to impact student learning and success was really focus on that EL group. Now, the data at the bottom actually is for ELs in particular, so, Overall, our school, 50% of our students that tested last year on SBAC scored 50% um, ex meet or exceeding in English language arts and 31% in math. But in ELs, they scored very differently. Actually, 6.67% only met standards in English language arts, and none of them actually met or exceeded standards for math. So this was really the group that we wanted to hone in on for the PLC that I created. And this was the PLC team at my high school. So we chose a vertical team model as D4 recommends for our PLC team. And I not only am the science department chair, but I also teach uh, two science classes and I'm also the school's dating and testing coordinator. Um, my other uh, counterparts for my team taught science, uh, the same science classes that I taught, but the other ones also were part of the sheltered instruction program and even the dual language program at our high school. Now, using the supportive cultural network, uh, according to Deal and Peterson, we actually each took on a role after doing some, some self-reflection and self-assessment, and I ended up being the priest in the node for the group, and part of that was because I'm the data coordinator, so I was able to find a lot of strategies and tools that our group could use and a lot of data, especially. And the other members, they were really good at networking and, and finding um, other lessons and other strategies that maybe we weren't aware of and were really important for um, bringing new ideas to the table to the PLC. Now, our district goal for, for English and math is that mostly all of our students are expected to be proficient in English and math. And our school's goal is that every year about three to five percent of our students could improve in English language arts and math. But for our science PLC team, we wrote a different goal, and that was that 40 percent of our students would be able to model the cell diffusion across the membrane by mathematically calculating concentrations of, of molecules across a, a membrane before final exams. So this SMART goal, the way we implemented it, was by um, uh, creating an exit ticket, like a way to check for understanding. And after looking at the data, this is what we found, that of my class that I focused on, of 24 students, most of them actually were able to meet or exceed, which is what the two uh, bars on the left represent. For Ms. Cadero's class, the results were a little different. About half and half of her students were able to understand the concept, the other half um, not, not so much. Um, and for Ms. Gutierrez, who teaches the middle school and the dual language arts program, a lot of them were not able to um, meet that SMART goal. And this was a concern going in by that teacher after looking at the preliminary data, and especially because uh, we have such a high EL rate and um, 
uh, like our test score suggests, um, um, it was already a problematic area, but that's why we chose to focus on this. Now, this video here actually shows some of the brainstorming sessions that we did to hone in on why um, focusing on um, math and, and skills to be able to use math was so important to us. Remember when we did that PD uh, about DOK levels, the four levels? Yeah. So I can tell you from, from direct observation, a lot of our teachers are only doing DOK ones and twos. Like most of them, like 80% of the teachers I visit, it's just one and two. There's very few teachers that are doing what we're saying we want our students to be able to do, which is take that information, do something with it, solve a problem, right? So how can we how can we formulate what what we want them to do in terms of DOK levels? Like, how do we translate that into a skill? Now, the biggest takeaway from this uh, meeting and all the five meetings that we had was that we all brought different skills to the table and through this collaborative PLC group, we were able to bounce ideas off each other like you just saw and really focus on what the need was. We came up with this um, collaborative strategy that we implemented. We implemented it, we collected data that you just saw, and in the end, now we have uh, a science department, us, us three in particular, who want to move forward with this process and want to make sure that we all have student success and learning in mind and that we can look at data to reflect on our practices and really make the best decisions for our students. So. I, I really um, hope you enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to implementing this in the near future. Thank you.